Hi everyone, it's Roma Fisher from Spirit Alive in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Thank you across our nation. Thank you, my partners and friends. I want to let you know we're praying for you, believe in God with you during this, this hour. And I'm always confessing the word of God over you and believing that protection is yours, uh, success is yours, prosperity is yours. It belongs to you because God has declared it. And so thank you for tuning in with Spirit Alive. We're going to come right back after this and pray with you. Enjoy the program. Hello, viewers and partners of Spirit Alive. We're excited to announce the launch of our live helpline. Counselors will be available during the Sunday Spirit Alive broadcast to answer your calls for spiritual help and encouragement. We're here to pray with you. We're also available to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for the newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us with your praise reports and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Over and over. So what I've done over the years is I've listened to certain CDs or messages, not just one time, not just two times, not three times, not four times, not five times, not six times, many, many times over one area of one CD message or something that I really enjoyed, that spoke to me, that answered a, a situation in my life. And that's, why you ha that's how you're going to have to defeat the enemy, is hear something about an area you've been weak in. And so uh, the devil's tactic, what's, what's the devil's tactic? Well, he attacks the mind. Through imagination, through thoughts, giving you thoughts. Over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, uh, Paul continues to talk to these uh, Corinthians. He said, but I fear lest by any means as a, as a serpent or the devil beguiled, beguiled Eve through the subtlety so that your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know, some things in the, in the teachings of Christ are so simple and yet we compl complicate it because the devil will bring on thoughts just to add on stuff to get you so complicated and mixed up and, and, and uh, uh, thinking crazy about certain things that you think you're, you know, you're, you're, you're doing yourself good, but stay simple with the Word of God. And so the devil liked to complicate things. And so Paul said, you know, this is how Eve, you know, she was, she was tempted and she was tempted there, uh, beguiled through the, subtle, through, through the subtlety. The devil is very subtle with his ways. And, and he said that the, to the Corinthians, he said, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to be tricked like the, like the devil tricked Eve, uh, you Corinthians, because stay, stay simple. Stay on the word and stay simple with the word of God. Take scriptures that will answer certain things in, in, about your life and stay on it. It's not how much Bible you read. Now, you can do this. You can read a whole pile of Bible just to, just to understand the structure and the chronological ordering of the scriptures and learning different books and uh, who authored different things and study all that stuff. But there's sometimes you just have to stick with one subject that you're, that you're being bothered by. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I read a one-year Bible, but I'm also reading things with, that, I, that affect me. I don't, just don't read one area. I read things that, that cover my case. So if, you're, if you need a certain nutrition, you'd go to, you eat a certain nutritional food item because it answers certain things that your body needs. So you just don't eat everything. You just you eat that area or that portion of nutrition, that, that food, that you, item that you need that will help your body. Somebody said, I was reminded about this, said, you are what you eat. You know, my wife reminded me that eat your food for healing. Eat your food for healing. I think the Lord was talking to me. So, you know, what you eat, uh, you'll, you'll produce 
uh, whatever, if it's garbage, you'll be like garbage, or your body will be like garbage. So, so look at this. This is how he attacks. It's very, 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 very subtle that the devil attacks people, and sometimes they don't even realize the devil is attacking them. He doesn't come by and say, ooh, I'm the devil, and I'm going to attack your mind. No, he, 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 just, he just wants you to think that he's not even there. He wants you to think that you're thinking that thought, that you need to own that thought. And you say, why am I thinking this way? No, here's what the, uh, you know, a lady that says on TV, uh, her name is Joyce Meyer, and she said, you need to be thinking about what you've been thinking about. You know, don't just feed on every thought that comes to your mind. Begin to analyze it and say, is this lining up with the Word of God? Brother Hagin used to tell us that all the time. Is this thought lining up with the Word of God? And then cast it down, just like Paul said. Cast it down. Say, no, I ain't thinking that way. I'm, I'm going to think this way, what the Word of God says. And you're going to be all right. Let's see over here in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 to 8. Here is a, uh, an example of how this happens, of the, uh, the subtlety of the devil. Uh, here in Luke chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, the devil's being attacked. You know, uh, he's been attacked, I think, uh, three or four times there. The devil comes to attack him and challenges him about who he, who he really is. The devil took him up uh, and revealed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I mean, the devil, he's got knowledge, he got, he's got abilities to do certain things that other humans can't do. You can't enter a thought of another man's mind. But the devil, apparently, he's got this access to people that he can attack people. Now he comes to Jesus and try to attack Jesus. And just imagine this. If he can attack Jesus this way, just imagine when he's going to attack you when you don't even have, have the word of God in you planted the way you should. So he comes here and attacks Jesus. He said, I'll give you all these kingdoms of, uh, and authority. Or, uh, I'll give you the glory of all these kingdoms and the authority over them. Now, you know, he's being, he's being challenged here, and he's been given a, uh, uh, you know, uh, he was in being enticed because he was being tempted to do something that he shouldn't do. Because the devil had these things that belonged to him because it was given over to him by, by Adam. Adam had the, uh, you know, the authority before, but the devil stole it from him through, through deception. And so, and then he, now... The Bible says that Satan is the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And other scriptures tell about that he's the prince and part of the heir. And so uh, he comes to Jesus here, and he's enticing him and tempting him. He said, I'll give you all this glory and the kingdoms and authority over them. So a lot of people are getting attacked. They're being enticed and tempted to, to take the easy road, to do something that's maybe illegal or maybe immoral or, or something that they can take. And so, uh, he says, because they are mine to give anyone, I, I, I please. A, a simple understanding is that he, he got it from, from Adam and Eve. He said, I will give it to you, if you, all to you, if you worship me. This is like selling your soul to the devil. He said, Jesus replied, this, the scripture said, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So, he, he replied with the scripture. So, that's how you turn it around when you're casting down imaginations. You take scripture. You take the thought that's not coming, that's coming from the devil, and he said, no, that's not right. And then you speak the word of God back to him and say, that's not how it goes. This is how it goes. Now, this happened in a moment of time. It was so quick and subtle that if you're not, if you're not aware of the spiritual attack coming to you, you're going to think it's just you or that you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're a failure, you're weak and all that stuff, or you're giving to something. So it's a split second, and it's actually so enticing that you want to jump at it. So thoughts are rushing through your mind, and your emotions are all aroused, and you want to jump to another area. So this is an attack. And then sometimes the devil will not only bring, you know, a, a thoughts, arousing thoughts of, of the flesh, of your carnality to rouse you up. You're, you're enticing you with, with your impulses of your flesh. He'll entice you in that way, but he'll also... He'll also bring fear to you. Over here in 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowards, of, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and a calm and well-balanced and disciplined 
and self-controlled mind, well-balanced mind. So God wants you to be well-balanced in your mind and your thinking. That's, that's, the mean to, that's what it means to have, be a sober in your thoughts, to have sober thinking. That means you're balanced. You're so balanced that uh, people think there, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I was listening to another man. There was a preacher on television. Man, he's so perfect. I mean, he's got every hair in place. I mean, he speaks all the right words. He's very gracious, wonderful preacher. And, uh, you know, this fact is so nice. In fact, you think there's something wrong with him. I mean, just so beautiful, this preacher, and so smooth, and makes it like it's easy. Anybody can get it right now. And, uh, I mean, it's so, you believe that, man, I can do that too. But then we got off to listen to that uh, preacher, and then I got, got it with my, my friend. He said, you know, one thing about that guy, you know, I like that guy, but there's something wrong with him. One thing about him is that he's, he's all perfect, you know. He's too, he's, too wrong, he's too nice. And so, you know, we just laugh about it because something can be so wonderful that you think it's not true. So God says in 2 Timothy that he's given us, a, he's given us ability to control our mind. He said, God has given us a well-balanced mind. In other words, you have to be the housekeeper of your mind. You can control your thoughts. You can control what goes in, what comes out of your thoughts, what you can imagine. That's your ability to manage that. Your thoughts are your thoughts. You can start thinking the way you want to think. Don't just let battles go on your mind day after day, week after week. You're going to go crazy. Take, take, take your mind and start disciplining it. Talk to it. Tell it, you know, mind, listen. You're going to think what, I'm, what I want you to think. There's people, you know, I, I was at school uh, being a professor, teacher there for a number of years. And t- kids would tell us, you know, hey, I, I got ADD, ADHD, whatever. He said, I, I, can't, I, got, I can't control my thoughts. Well, you know, <laughs> I want to say something, but... Um, you know, you can, you can control your mind. Sometimes, you know, my, my, my parents used to grab a big stick and made us control our mind <laughs> and made us think right, you know. So you, 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 can, think you're, you can think in the right place if, you, if, you, if you're being challenged. So sometimes people let themselves get away with stuff. And I, I like what Keith Moore used to say. He said, people will get away what they can get away with. And you, my friend, your flesh will get away what you let it get away with. And your mind will do what it wants to do if you don't discipline it. God wants to give you, he wants you to have that well-balanced mind because he's giving you that ability. He's giving you the ability to control that mind. And so, let's go read it, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 to, to 10. I'm reading the Amplified Bible. And this is uh, controlling your thoughts concerning worry. He says, casting down, or casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries... All your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. You can find this scripture also in Psalm 55, 22. Thank you for watching Spirit Alive. I believe that, you know, this hour we need to have a faith put in our heart. You know, there's so many negative things going on right now that it can disrupt your, your peace. I believe the message of faith regarding peace, regarding safety, will go into your, your heart and change your mind and change the way you feel about things and change the way you make decisions. And uh, I believe this is a divine connection. We're going to be right back after the program and pray for your needs. Hello, viewers and partners of Spirit Alive. We're excited to announce the launch of our live helpline. Counselors will be available during the Sunday Spirit Alive broadcast to answer your calls for spiritual help and encouragement. We're here to pray with you. We're also available to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for the newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us with your praise reports and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith.
Hi, we're partners with Spirit Alive Television Ministries. Uh, we've been partners for how long now? Uh, ten years. Uh, ten years, yeah. We've been part of it ever since it started. We're excited to see what it's doing, excited to see how it's been growing and all the lives that it's been changing. Yeah, it changed our life completely. The message of faith, yeah. of healing and hope, it just completely changed our lives for the betterment. Yeah. And we want to share that spirit of faith with you. We thank God for you, our partners and friends. We encourage our viewers to share with us how Spirit Alive is helping you. Please write us or call us. We are believing God with you. You can find this scripture also in Psalm 55, 22. Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant, cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil. Now, he's saying something here, right here. He's saying, listen, you can take your mind. You can be well-balanced, temperate, sober of mind. In other words, you're going to be sober as a judge, they say. Think right, think clear, have a clear mind about the, about the things of God, about your body, about your mind, about your ability. So your mind is your mind. You can control what you think. I mean, you can think all kinds of ways you want to, if you allow yourself to, but you're going to be, tonight, starting tonight, you're going to learn how to control your thinking. Now, the Lord gave me this t teaching here tonight. He said, I want you to teach people about spiritual warfare. I want you to teach people about the devil's tactics and what he's been doing to people, causing them fear and anxiety. And as long as you're fearful of doing what you're supposed to do, you'll never Go to where you're supposed to go. The devil will make you fearful about losing, about, uh, you know, uh, not doing what you, uh, you know, winning, whatever. He'll, he'll put failure in your mind. And as long as you've got that in your mind, if it's, a, if it's a stronghold in your mind, you're stuck there for the rest of your life unless you do something about that. That's not going to go away. It's always going to be there for 20, 30 years. It's going to still be there. And some people never get rid of it because they're afraid to go that direction. You've got to believe these scriptures. So he says that um, the devil roams around like a lion, roaring uh, like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. That's because that person hasn't had the right mind. He doesn't think right. So he's going to attack you in your mind if you are not disciplined, he says there, uh, withstand him. In other words, you have the power to withstand the devil in his thoughts. Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood in the whole world of the Christians, body of the Christians throughout the whole world. After you have suffered a while, you know, this is, this is something we suffer. This is one kind of suffering we all have, and that is have to deal with the mind, have to deal with the devil. As long as you're in your physical body, you're going to have to deal with your mind. You're going to have to deal with your emotions. You're going to have to deal with fear. You're going to have to deal with crazy thinking, and you're going to have to deal with fear thoughts. You're going to have to take authority over these things, and that's something that you suffer right now. That's one kind of suffering that you're going to have to suffer, and God doesn't want you to be, uh, you know, uh, fearful about that so that God of all grace thank you for that who imparts his blessing and favor who has called you by his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself complete and make you what you ought to be establish and ground you securely and strengthen you and settle you in other words be alert that this is going to happen don't be worried that this is happening be ready for the attacks in your mind be balanced or be in control of your mind. Why? Because God said you can control your mind. If you can control your mind, you can control your attitudes. If you can control your mind, you can control how you feel. If you can control your mind, you're going to make the next best step forward. Thank God for that. And another thing about it, the devil, he's going to attack you through people. He's going to attack you through a lot of people. Ever since you've been born, he's been trying to do that, control you through other people. Maybe perhaps through your mother. You ever tell your mom, you're just trying to control me. Hus husbands and wives says to me, you're always trying to control me. You're trying to control my thinking. 
You guys are trying to control my spending. Anyway, let's go to here, Acts 14.2. This is how your wife controls you, too. This is, here, here's Acts 14.2. He said, but, unbe- but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. How do, how do you stir people up? <laughs> how do you stir people up? How do you get them all riled up? Well, it says here, <laughs> made their minds evil affected against their brothers. In other words, you begin to plant seeds of thoughts in people's minds, then you stir people up. You know, the devil, he'll try to give you thoughts through people. He'll bring, send people to you to stir you up a little bit and get you mad. All of a sudden, you're mad at, mad at the government. You're mad at the, the chief. You're mad at the police chief. You're mad at their, any kind of chief. Amen? So, so you want to you wanna, you wanna start killing people. In your mind, as a Christian, you murder several people on the way to church. <laughs> I know I had, I remember I had somebody in the chokehold. Man, I'm just about killing him and all that. And, uh, you know, somebody said, mean, mean to say you think that way as a Christian, as a pastor? You're a pastor. Yeah, of course. The devil brings all kinds of mean, things in my mind. But I don't act on them. Thank God we'd all be in jail by then. Thank God. Well, you need to do something with your mind. Romans 12, 2 says so. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words... When it talks about presenting your body, it's talking about learning to control your, your body's appetites. Because your body, if you were, uh, you know, uh, single before and you're messing around, sleeping with all kinds of women and, and all kinds of men, and you're eating, overeating, and overindulging, oversleeping, doing all kinds of stuff, when you get born again, listen, you've got to control your body's appetites and impulses. So that's something that you have to do. The devil says, oh, go ahead and eat that extra pie. And he said, I wonder why I'm getting, gaining so much weight. I wonder why these clothes are not fitting like they used to. Honey, is this, are you using a different detergent? He says, yeah, honey. I've been turning up the heat on the, on the washer. That's why it's so small on you. No, you've been eating too much. Okay. He says here, uh, which is your reasonable service? Uh, present your bodies a certain living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, you have to renew your mind about a lot of issues concerning healing, health, concerning relationships, concerning a lot of areas. You have to renew your mind. So, so if you haven't been renewing your mind, you're not going to learn how to act on the Word of God. Notice this that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So renewing the mind, planting the word, changing your thinking, allows you to make decisions that are based on the word of God. Because your mind can be messed up because the devil put all kinds of stuff in there. And if you don't have the ability to fight the warfare with God's word and transplant and plant the word in your heart and mind like you should be. So we need to focus Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says this, the Amplified Bible. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, and thus the resurrection from the dead, aim and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at, the right hand of God. And set your minds, listen to this, set your minds and keep them set on what, what, what is above, higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. You know, earthly things are sensual things that are carnal things, that have nothing to do with your salvation or nothing to do with your victory. You have to start focusing on things that make your mind stable so that you'll be more healthier this year, more victorious this year, more, more in a state of uh, mental uh, healthy attitude all throughout the entire year than ever before. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will guard him and keep him in perfect peace, constant peace whose mind both his inclinations and character is stayed on you because he commits himself to you leans on you and hopes confidently in you so the bible tells us a lot about the mind this where the spiritual warfare is going on that we need to focus on what we need to focus on and that is focusing on what god says about your situation now how to have peace we want to close with this Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And I was a college student. I went to talk to a minister one time and had all these issues. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm glad that you tuned into the Spirit of Life program today. Uh, you know, we're, we're believing God with you, every one of you. 
that has been our partner, our friends. We're, we're, we're my wife and I and our staff here at at, at uh, Spirit Alive uh, National Center here in, in Thunder Bay. We're, we're believing with you. We're, we're trusting God that every need will be met. The Bible says that God will supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I want to invite you, if you've never been a partner before, and, and God spoke to me about my partners are those people out there watching. And He's instructed me to, to ask you to, to be a partner. And so I believe that as you partner with us, things are going to happen, things are going to change, change and turn around for you in the area of your finances and some other areas because God will bless you. He said He would. And when you partner up with a ministry, the blessing on that ministry will abide and come upon your house and come upon your life if you've been a partner. Um, there will be a message underneath there where you can send um, you know, your request or if you want to give and be a blessing. Thank you in the meantime and beforehand. I believe by faith that you're going to be a partner with us. And I want to pray with you, those of you that have uh, never uh, accepted Jesus as your Lord. The Bible says, you know, John 3, 3, you must be born again if you will enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says the way you get born again is you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus is Lord, we will be born again, we'll be saved. And so I thank God for that. So if you, wherever you are, bow your head right now and pray this prayer. I'm going to lead you in prayer right now. Bow your head. Say, Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm asking you right now to come into my life. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my old ways, my, my old life. I'm going to leave that behind. I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. Save me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. In, at this moment right now, I'm reserving my life to, put in, to be put in your hands. And I'll walk with you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. So if you made that a prayer, you are now born again. I want to send you something. If you write to us, find us uh, online. You can, you can look at the information that's there. You can call our office at 1-807-344-1956. Uh, uh, call our office and we will... Uh, get to you. We'll find you. And send us, you know, send us uh, your email or whatever it is. We want to. We want to partner with you for the rest of your life. God bless you. We'll see you next next time.